Okay, good morning. Uh, I was here today to talk to you about uh, FIAFCOR. Um, well, I'm here today to present FIAFCOR, uh, which is a linked open data ontology for film archives, but also to generally talk about the ongoing work which is being undertaken by the FIAF linked open data uh, task force. So I thought I would start by just going through some history first. Um, to begin with, linked open data is actually quite an old concept. Uh, it originated from Sir Tim Berners-Lee up there uh, in the late 90s. And it, um, this, is, this occurred to him, this idea came to him only about uh, 10 years after he'd in fact invented the World Wide Web in the late, in the late 80s. So uh, his observation was that the web was and still is uh, full of lots of interesting information which is unfortunately dispersed and it's presented without any uh, formal structures. So there is nothing tying all of this knowledge together, which means that it is not holistically queryable. So as a, as a basic example of this, I was going to do a quick tour of information pertaining to the Australian film Picnic Hang Rock, which is always my go-to example. Um, and what you will see here is uh, probably quite unsurprising if you have ever used the internet before. So let's have a look at what I've got here. So firstly, we have the Oz Movies site, which uh, has some very interesting information around the production and the distribution of the film. And this is sourced from various uh, books and newspapers. We have the Australian Censorship Board, um, information on the original classification of the film. Uh, we have the Australian Film Awards, which has some awards won, or actually, unfortunately not won. It looks like Pink Hang Rock actually lost out that year, but um, nominations in any case. And then we have this site, moviecensorship.com, which has, it's not really censorship, I suppose, but it actually has a very detailed breakdown between the original release cut and the uh, director's cut, which is actually now the more commonly seen version of the film. So, so this is what I mean by uh, dispersed. This is all terribly interesting information pertaining to the same film, but you actually have to seek out each piece of data kind of individually. The same is of course true for uh, archival collections online. So here we're going to look at the BFI's uh, page for the film, which has some, uh, some filmographic information, some holdings information, I think there's periodicals um, which reference the film further down, uh, the Swedish film database, which has some, some very specific information about when the film was screened, uh, when it was broadcast on Swedish television, and of course the NFSA in Australia's, uh, again, some filmographic information and extensive uh, physical holdings of the film. So again, a researcher or an archivist could consult all of these resources individually, uh, but this is quite time consuming and doesn't scale. Um, so FIAF has about 173 members and affiliates, so would you really search all of their different uh, you know, collections, many of them aren't online, um, just to look for source materials for a restoration project? And what if you wanted to ask a, a data question like how many Australian films exist only in non-Australian archival collections? This seems like something that would be relevant to a curator in an Australian archive. Where would you start kind of framing this question? So, uh, so I think the problem is that a lot of the information that you have seen so far is presented in the same manner in which uh, humans communicate, which is that it is often full of ambiguities and we decode it via the context or, uh, or kind of guesswork. And I was just going to, I had a kind of a fun example of this. So your friend says to you, my favorite film was The Last Laugh and for my birthday, I want a DVD of The Last Laugh. This seems like a reasonable request, uh, but you get to the DVD store if it still exists, and you realize that you don't actually know specifically what they mean. Do they mean this film? This film's called The Last Laugh. Or do they mean this, this film is also called The Last Laugh? You know, which film are they talking about? If you get the wrong one, I guarantee they will be disappointed. <laughs> so what would have been very useful would be if your friend had actually asked this question, or told you this, that my favorite film is HTTPS, www.wikidata.org slash wiki slash this, this removes the ambiguity of what is actually being requested here, although your friend does sound a bit weird. So I'm using Wikidata identifiers here intentionally because Wikidata is already an excellent example of how this disambiguation can work for institutions. 
if you visit the Wikidata page for Pick and Hang Rock, you can find a whole stream of uh, internal IDs for a number of different platforms and, and archives uh, who have already proactively uh, added their identifiers. And I think just obviously you can't capture it because this page goes on for ages. But I think here we can see there's a Cinematheque Quebec was their uh, ID for this film. We have the Czech, I think it's the Czech Film Database. Uh, there's also the Danish National Filmography sitting there. Um, so this is really doing the work in distingu distinguishing that this film that I'm talking about is the same film that uh, you are talking about. Just to extend this. Thanks, I'll get back here. So if we would actually look closely at the BFI and the NFSA's collection information, we may notice there's even uh, differences in the data. So here the BFI have listed an actor, they've listed Anne Lambert, and the NFSA have Anne Louise Lambert. Um, so is this the same person or not? Well, we can certainly make a, an educated guess, but it's not actually explicitly expressed. And so what would be extremely useful in this case would be if both institutions could attach the uh, a relevant identifier. So here I've used an example, the Wikidata identifier would be quite useful. Um, and this would go some way to disambiguating what is meant in both collections and would allow us to begin to think about querying holistically can you show me all films in both collections that feature this individual? Now, so Wikidata would only get you so far though. It would work fine for things like films and individuals, directors, actors. However, a lot of data that archives are willing to share, as we just saw, is simply too granular for Wikidata. So I'm thinking about things like physical holdings, you know, film items that are in vaults, you are not going to get away with actually creating Wikidata IDs for every single one. A Wikidata moderator um, admin will stop you from doing that. So this then points to the need for a dedicated resource. Uh, so, and this is, I suppose, where the FIAF Linked Open Data Task Force came in with the idea of actually doing the groundwork and building a knowledge graph which could collect, harmonize, and make uh, data from interesting institutions available to the community. As a, as a resource. So, um, last year we ran a prototype project to test out this theory, to actually put it into practice, and it was centered on the film works of F.W. Murnau, and we approached uh, eight different contributing institutions to contribute data, um, so there's the eight there, and to keep the barrier of involvement low, we didn't stipulate any requirements for submitting data, so we got them in all sorts of different file formats, and I spent a month harmonizing and working these contributions into a form where they could be put into a single triple store and queried holistically. Um, so I've already talked a bit about the need for shared identifiers when working in the linked open data space. The first complexity of the project was obviously to identify where works, this is the, so films and agents were uh, overlapping, but there were also a lot of structural complexities with the project, uh, especially around the manifestation level. Um, so this is a lot of cataloging jargon here, but so the issue was that if you're talking about uh, Nosferatu, the film, if I'm talking, sorry, if I'm talking about Nosferatu, the film from 1922, and you were talking about Nosferatu, the film from 1922, it is likely that we are talking about the same thing and we can apply a single identifier to it. If I'm talking about a VHS copy of Nosferatu which is sitting on my shelf and you are talking about a VHS copy of Nosferatu which is sitting on your shelf, these are distinct physical things. They can each have their own identifier, that's fine. The problem is the level in between here, this manifestation level which, which is an identifier that you're looking to apply for a distinct realization, release, exhibition or distribution event. And that can be surprisingly difficult to determine um, based just on kind of collection information or detecting overlap. So, um, so this was harmonizing kind of the structure uh, that was going on. There was also a lot of done work with harmonizing the vocabularies. And by this I mean a vocabulary. So an, an institution will have a set range of possible values for a specific field. And um, I've just got two of my favorite examples here. One was around country. So for instance, USA. USA is uh, 
is fairly unambiguous. If I say USA, you say United States of America, we can be fairly happy that we're talking about the same thing. One specific case that I found where there was discrepancy was where some institutions will give different governments of Germany different identifiers and refer to them as distinct countries, whereas others will just group them as, you know, Germany. Um, for linked open data, this actually isn't a huge issue because we can actually just say that these are all types of Germany and then cluster them under a, a different kind of identifier and harmonize that way. A more difficult issue, though, was where there was actually um, different kind of equivalents in technical terms. So from this prototype, some institutions would group their um, kind of production component of film with the videotape format. So for them, that was a single vocabulary. For others, they would group the gauge with the videotape format. That was a single vocabulary. And so harmonizing that was quite a bit more difficult because I actually had to grab different data from different kind of sections. Anyway, on to the results. So I did do a series of uh, Jupyter Notebooks, which were targeted at showing how you could query this kind of uh, collected data. Here we have a breakdown of uh, what each institution held against this filmmaker, broken down by media types. This is just allowing you to query all the, all the data together. I also wanted to demonstrate the ability to query community data. So the BFI did not, I don't believe, contribute any birth information. So here I was showing where you could have their identifier and then you could pull birth information from, um, from this kind of community, community data and kind of demonstrate how you could have this as a resource to be used um, on demand. Uh, a number of the institutions also provided print length. I had to do the conversion between uh, meters and feet, but then I could actually line up lengths of different components, and this struck me as something that would be very useful for a restoration project, say, where you actually want to see, is this component longer than the component that I have? Uh, lastly, I actually put together this kind of small um, interactive uh, yeah, D3 kind of um, way of navigating all the different items. So having uh, finished up this project, the next obvious step was to scale up. And um, so we're now working on a much bigger prototype. We've gone from 20 works to about 200,000 works sourced from four, um, you know, kind of large film institutions. And that's what I'm currently working on um, late into the morning, <laughs> a fair bit. Um, so one of the main requirements for this project was the construction of a formal ontology. That we, and this is where we get to FIAF 4. Um, so here it is here. So working off the FIAF Moving Image Cataloging Manual, we've built a, um, a draft ontology with the intention that it can be used by film archives to conform their data um, to produce linked open data as kind of the scaffolding that they can, they can use for this process. This is, this is how the ontology looks uh, kind of viewed as obviously a draft structure. Uh, we also have draft documentation up at fiafcore.org and would really welcome any feedback. Um, it's currently, I think it exists in four different languages, I think, as well. Um, and lastly, we have a, we've just put up a fiaf GitHub page as well because there wasn't one before. So there we've actually got the OWL files and links and yeah, different resources sitting in there. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I was just going to throw up my email address. Um, please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or observations or um, yeah, just want to discuss further. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Paul.